We've seen that externalities give rise to inefficiencies or deadweight losses because they create a difference between the supply curve and the social marginal cost curve in the case of negative externalities or between the demand curve and the social marginal benefit curve in the case of positive externalities. We now want to step back and say, what's the deeper underlying fundamental reason for why these differences in these curves emerge? And we'll begin with the example of pollution. So suppose the firms in this industry emit pollution into the air as they produce the output X. What's really going on is that they're using an additional input, an input other than labor and capital, and that input is clean air. They're using the input of clean air to help produce the output X, and in the process they emit pollution. But unlike labor and capital, which they have to purchase, they don't have to purchase clean air. They're just grabbing clean air out of what's called the commons. The commons is where resources that aren't privately owned are held. They're commonly held, and they're oftentimes freely accessible to anyone. So when they are freely accessible, firms can simply go into that commons and grab that free air and use it as an input into producing the good X. So the difference between the input of labor and capital and the input of clean air is that labor and capital are bought in a market. The firms have to pay for those inputs and as a result they become part of the supply curve. They're part of the marginal costs the firms face. But the input clean air is not bought in a market. There is a missing market. There is no market for clean air. Unlike labor and capital, which are owned by people, and so you have to get their permission to use it in production, you have to pay them a wage or a rental rate, air isn't owned by anybody. Clean air isn't owned by anybody, and so there's no one to charge you for the use of that clean air. So they're missing property rights. Nobody owns the air and has a right to tell you you have to pay a certain amount in order to use it as an input into production. This is called the tragedy of the commons. When resources like clean air are commonly owned and freely accessible, there's a tragedy that emerges, the inefficiency, the deadweight losses that arise from people overusing those commonly owned resources. And the reason that they're overusing it is because there's no price, there's no market, there were no property rights for those resources. So this points to one way of solving an externality problem of solving the tragedy of the commons. It's not the only way of solving it, and we'll point out some other ways in class, but it points the way towards market-based, property rights-based mm -hmm. approaches to solving externalities. If we could find a way to establish a market in clean air, to establish property rights, and then allow people to trade in that market the way that they trade in the labor market, in the capital market, then Firms would have to pay for the use of clean air, just like they pay for labor and capital. And so the use of clean air would become part of the marginal costs of firms. The supply curve would shift because there'd be more marginal costs. And it would shift towards the social marginal cost curve that includes the social damage from the pollution that's created, from the fact that clean air is being used and dirty air comes out. So if firms had to pay for that, their supply curve would shift up towards the social marginal cost curve and that difference would be eliminated. So establishing property rights is one way of addressing externalities. And it also works for positive externalities. If you think of the case of me setting off fireworks in my backyard, I consume the benefits of those fireworks by being able to look at them. But my neighbors get to consume benefits as well. So I'm imposing benefits on others that are not participating in the market for fireworks. They didn't participate in the buying and selling of those fireworks. Now, if there was a market for my services of putting fireworks into the air and my neighbors could be charged for consuming those services, 
then I would internalize those benefits that they receive because I'm getting paid for them. Just as firms who would have to buy clean air as an input into production would internalize the cost of using clean air and therefore the elim would eliminate the difference between these curves. So in both positive and negative externalities, we can think of the underlying problem as being one of missing markets that result in either an overproduction in the case of negative externalities or an underproduction in the case of positive externalities. It's those missing markets that give rise to that difference between social benefit curves and private benefit curves or social marginal cost curves and private marginal cost or supply curves.